Meet the president of the McGowan Fence and Supply Company, Catherine Hofstetter. Her father started this business in 1948. McGowan supplies and installs fencing for industries, homes and farms in the Toronto area. As a little girl, Catherine visited job sites with her father and after his death, she took over the family business. She now employs 10 people and she loves the work. But it's been a challenge to go to work. You see, Catherine has rheumatoid arthritis and she lives with pain every day. Arthritis has turned my life upside down. From where I was when I was 36 years old and the hopes and the dreams that I had at 36 and where I thought my life was going to go is not where my life went. Can you just tell me if anything really hurts more? Dr. Saul Stern is examining a patient's hands, palpitating each joint to detect swelling. 20 years ago, Catherine sat here in terrible pain. Within a three-week period, every joint was on fire and she could hardly walk. Dr. Stern pursued a cause and diagnosed her. There was very little treatment we could offer at that time to stop the progression of the condition. So we could offer painkillers, we could offer physiotherapy, we could offer, as we did with Catherine, fusion of her wrists. But at that time, it was a pretty scary diagnosis. Dr. Claire Bombardier is a rheumatologist at a Toronto hospital, a professor of medicine and rheumatology at the University of Toronto, a senior scientist, and a respected researcher worldwide. When I started practicing as a rheumatologist 30 years ago, we went on the wards and we had people who were bedridden with deformed fingers, deformed knees. They were walking uh, with walkers or in wheelchairs. We rarely see that today. Today, thanks to technology, advanced x-rays and ultrasound imaging, researchers can now see that joints become permanently damaged early in the disease. So doctors are now prescribing drugs much earlier to prevent disability from arthritis. And as a result, the treatment guidelines have changed. As more and more people develop more and more chronic conditions, doctors are writing more and more prescriptions. And since many of these conditions last a lifetime, once required, it's easy to see how this adds up. The drug landscape is changing. So there's been a huge amount of change and it's very hard for physicians and patients and payers to keep up, to know what's what, what should be used. So the Canadian Rheumatology Association uh, delegated to their therapeutics committee and us uh, to develop guidelines for rheumatoid arthritis. And we worked for two years, we looked at what was done around the world, we reviewed the literature, and the guidelines were just printed in the Journal of Rheumatology in August, so very recently. Claude D'Astasio has a keen understanding of the changing drug landscape. She is the Vice President of Quebec Affairs for the CLHIA, the Canadian Life and Health Insurance Association. In the recent years, there's some drugs that came on the market at a cost of 500,000, 600,000, even 1.2 million dollars per year, per person. Uh, we've seen drugs, uh, the, the, the thing with these new drugs at a high cost is that they are recurring cost. People will take them, will feel better, will live better life for 10, 15 years. So when you add that up, that's humongous. Someone has got to sit out and figure out the cost of the drugs versus the cost of the disability. And as a physician, that's very hard for me to do. I want to advocate for my patient. For Catherine, the best possible treatment includes biologic drugs made from living microorganisms. They're more complex to make and as a result can be very expensive. And I actually made a business case with the Ontario government for why they should cover my medication because they did refuse to cover it initially. But I made a business case because I have people working for me. My company pays uh, corporate income tax, it pays provincial income tax, and we collect sales tax from people and remit that, and you know, HST, the whole thing. And every one of my employees pays personal income tax, and those people are counting on me because if I can't make this work, then I'm out of business, the company is gone, and all those men are out of work. 
And so we feel that there's going to be a tsunami that we need to prepare for. So it's not only the cost of drug, it's the cost of treatment. And if we don't treat early and aggressively, and if we don't diagnose and they're not referred for appropriate treatment, down the line you have deformities of joints, difficulty walking, disabilities that accumulate, people losing their job, not being able to deal with their family, with their children. And so the cost down the line is very important. Catherine has already lived with arthritis for 20 years. Long ago, she decided that to live with it, she had to learn about it. And so she actively advocates for the Arthritis Society. She's also working with Dr. Bombardier on a long-term study, tracking both the safety and efficacy of biologics. Without these medications, I wouldn't be active at all. I, I can't even imagine where my life would be. I wouldn't have a roof over my head. I wouldn't be able to put food on my table because I don't have disability insurance either. So I have to work. What we need to, to work together to create new models of care because that's the way that you're going to have appropriate care, the right patient at the right place at the right time at the right cost. As we saw the, the plan cost increase over the years, we saw that the drug part has become the most significant component of the premium. I'm positive that we'll work out some solution, but the storm is coming, so we have to uh, get ready.